Here's part four of our conversation with Mark Jordan. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Canada. Well, Reckless Valentine, um, I asked you this and I've still got that interview. I'm actually putting them all to, I've got like boxes of interviews that I want to share with people. But wow. you had said that uh, uh, some guy at the station, I said, this guy must have broken up with Amy. Something must be going on. And, and I remember you laughed when I said that. Uh, but how, how do you, where's that reservoir? Is it like you said a while ago? Because now we're going to use these clips for the Reckless Valentine uh, thing I'm doing. Um is it basically friends like are going through crap? Is it where, where where's the resource of, of coming up with a concept like that album? Well, I I'm more interested in the in when things don't go right. I find that much more interesting, and I've learned more about life when things have been fucked up. When things go right, it's great. But in order to appreciate when things go right, there needs to be you know, it's light and shadow. It's like painting, right? And um, I've always learned more from heartache and pain and my own insecurity and my own inadequacies, which are many. I've learned more about life from that than I have about the good times. Because the good times are just the good times. Not that they're bad. They're not bad. They're great. But, but if you don't have the darkness, you can't see the light. Backstreet Boy, uh, Boys to me is um, is probably I, I, there's just a, the, a sense of cool in that song. It's just the way you sing it. It's the way the song builds, the way it starts the project. Um, and another thing I've always wanted to tell you because I don't think I did then. Uh, that's probably one of those songs that I played the most. It's even though it's not a real fast song. That's a driving song to me because it, it gets me in a mode. Um, to me, you're just, you just sound like a, the coolest dude in the world singing that song. I, I know, I know, I sound too much like a fan right now, but, but what can you tell me about that tune? Well, I spent a, a, a bit of time in New York. Well, I, I was actually born in New York. And that song um, is about New York. I, you know, a lot of my songs are ha, ha, always uh, my songs ha, have to have a sense of place, and I don't think I mentioned New York in that song. I can't remember the lyric offhand. It ha, it 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 has that vibe for me. I was signed to Blue Note, I think, when that record came out. I I think so. So I was spending more time in, in New York, and um. It's, uh, you know, it's about the guys, it's about those guys. It's about those guys that shuffle around on, not on, not on Park Avenue, the guys up in Harlem and the guys, uh, you know, in the, on the side streets where the, where, where the sun never shines because the buildings are too high and the streets are too narrow and they're, they're doing their thing. They're, they're making a life, they're making money doing this and stealing that and selling this. So that was the vibe of the of that song, you know. Uh, lyric is one thing, and what you say in a song lyrically, but there, there's and words are a language, but melody is language too. And when you put the two together, these two languages together, the spoken word and the musical mel melodic language. When they are matted up correctly, there's a third meaning created. You know, there's there's fission, and something else is created. You find that a lot in Coldplay songs that there's no linear sense, but there is an absolute meaning. Once, if you read it, you're not sure what it is, but when you hear it, you know what it is. And I, I think uh, Backstreet Boys a little bit like that, or at least that's what I was hoping. By the way, back in 93, it might have been early 94, I had a lady who had lost her daughter, and she phoned crying after listening to Little Lambs. She heard that song, and she said, that's the most beautiful piece of music that I've ever heard. And I'm one of those research hogs where people will call. I'll always keep track of when, why people call. And I have in this computer over here, I do love songs in Vancouver, uh, this show. 
uh, for the same company. We used to be Chum, as, and now it's Bell Media. But I keep track, and but I was struck by that because that album was big for me as well. Um, and I've always wanted to tell you that as well. And I never, you know, how do you come up? Hey, Mark, by the way, someone called up and they cried when they heard that song. But uh, I cried when I wrote it. You know, I was a new dad when I wrote that. And I and the the the, the news was just coming out about all those kids who had been, you know, mother, mother, you know, unwed mothers and in Montreal and in many other places, the Maritimes and Christ had happened in Australia. They weren't, you, know, you couldn't get an abortion and these little kids gave birth to children and uh, they were put in these schools and treated badly by and large and, and abused. And, and so that was just kind of, it was the first I'd heard of it and I just moved back to Canada. And I guess the same thing happened with the residential schools. But this was about uh, the ones uh, north of Montreal in uh, Roque, Quebec, uh, the, the Catholic orphanages. And uh, a tremendously sad story. And it's so, you know, the, these damaged children, now, now adults, uh, coming forward and talking about it. It's so brave and it's cathartic and, and it was uh, just heartbreaking. One of the things I like about your music is, I just said this about Elton John, was there's so many tracks, uh, as George Benson would say, tasty tracks on the album that could have been singles to me. And I mean, I never agree with usually what's released as a single. Uh, the same mistake, and uh, Tell Me You Love Me is a little a little more, uh, more of a lament, but uh, the same mistake to me, when I first heard that, I, I, I played the crap out of that song uh, because we were FM, we could do it. Um, do you have that relationship with that song? Because to me, that was a... I love that song. I don't think that it, that song ever got its due, and I'm not sure why. I think that's a really... I'm very proud of that song. It's a, it's a well-crafted song, and, and the production was great, and I, I, I really... I love that song, and I don't know... Like, you're the first person that's mentioned it in many years, but I... Ne no, the ra record company never, never saw that one. We'll have more of our conversation with Mark Jordan coming up next week. Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Canada.